Hello lovelies, in this video we're looking at reservoirs for your A-level environmental science. Now as always, to go with this video over on the website, there's a free set of questions and a free set of flashcards to help you revise everything. Lesson 11, Reservoirs. A reservoir can be defined as a large body of water, often with a dam, to control flow of water downstream. They are used to store water for public use and work well to control the supply of water. For instance, if there is a surplus of water available, then it can be stored in the reservoir until there is a shortage, where it can then be released. Deciding where to place a reservoir can be quite challenging, as there are lots of different factors to consider. It needs to be somewhere with a high precipitation rate. This means the reservoir will refill naturally. The topography, or shape, of the area must have a large volume and a small surface area. This will allow a large volume of water to be stored and having a smaller surface area will mean less water will evaporate, maintaining the supply. The area should also have a narrowed area that can be used to build the dam that will hold the water in the reservoir. The geology of the area should be completely stable with no fault lines underneath to prevent the loss of water from the reservoir. The rock that forms the basin should also be impermeable to stop the water from infiltrating into the ground and leaving the reservoir. It should have a large catchment area, meaning lots of water will run into it from a large area surrounding the site. There should be a low evaporation rate in the area, i.e. an area with fairly low direct sunlight that will be able to heat the water and cause it to evaporate. There should be no pre-existing land use conflicts for the area, for example, it should not be being used in agriculture or have a forest already there that would have to be removed. The area should be in close proximity to where the water needs to be delivered to get to the consumer. This reduces the need for the building of new infrastructure, which can be costly and cause more habitat damage such as population fragmentation. It should be in an area where the water is at a low risk of being polluted. Like being away from crop farms who spray chemical pesticides which could easily run off into the water. Once the reservoir site has been chosen, the reservoir and dam need to be built. We're going to look at some of the environmental impacts associated with this. To ensure we are being as thorough as possible, we are going to start by looking at environmental impacts of the building process and then environmental impacts that occur due to the completed reservoir. So in order to build the dam that is associated with the reservoir, Lots of raw materials such as cement and aggregates will need to be used. Aggregates are mined, which can cause lots of environmental damage, such as noise pollution, dust pollution, and the release of acid mine drainage water. In the production of cement and other materials, toxic byproducts and waste products are made, which can kill species if released into the environment. In order to build the reservoir, the area has to be completely flooded destroying the previous habitat and therefore killing the species that relied upon it. However, something to consider is that the flooding will also create a new wetland type habitat which other rare species may come to rely on. When the reservoir and dam are complete, the dam often acts as a barrier to wildlife, preventing migratory species like salmon from moving further downstream in the associated river. Furthermore, the water being still, whilst held in the reservoir, causes sedimentation of any organic matter and pollutants where they will sink to the bottom. This means any nutrients in the organic matter will stay trapped in the reservoir instead of staying afloat in the water and being transported downstream, reducing the fertility of riverbanks there. The fact that there is a large mass of dead organic matter leads to higher levels of aerobic decomposition by bacterial species which removes oxygen from the water, lowering the dissolved oxygen content. This can lead to the oxygen levels moving out of an aerobic species range of tolerance, leading to their death. Reservoirs also create microclimates, a small area where the climate is slightly different to its surroundings due to the large body of water. As we have learned, water has a high specific heat capacity, meaning it takes a large amount of energy to change the temperature by one or two degrees. This helps to buffer temperature changes in the area directly around the reservoir meaning temperatures are usually more stable. Furthermore, water provides less friction than land, so wind velocity is higher around the reservoir. 
There will also be evaporation of the water occurring, which will lead to an increase in humidity, precipitation and cloud cover. All of these changes to the abiotic factors in the area may become essential in the survival of the organisms that have colonised. What methods can we use to reduce the impact? Firstly, to prevent the dams being such a barrier to migration, devices called salmon cannons have been created. These devices allow migratory species such as salmon to be transported over the dam and continue their migration route without obtaining any injuries. To prevent some of the environmental impacts associated with mining, we can do the following. For dust pollution, we can use water sprays to increase the mass of the dust so it falls to the floor, reducing mobility. For noise pollution, use structures called baffle mounds which absorb the noise. And for acid mine drainage, use an alkali to neutralise the pH of the solution, which in turn will cause any toxic heavy metals to precipitate out as well. To prevent the death of species who will not survive when the habitat is flooded, we can relocate them to other similar areas that will provide a new suitable habitat. This has to be done with great caution to ensure that relocating the species there will not cause negative effects such as trophic cascades or invasive behaviour. When the wetland sites have been created, they can be allocated as protected areas, for example, Ramsar sites to prevent any damaging activities from harming them. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.